Okay, so since so many people end up requesting for my UI, and even though I provide the strings, I guess people still don't entirely understand how you use those to replicate my UI, I figured I would try to start from scratch and see if I could replicate it with the strings provided. If people need help though with SCADA and stuff, I have it configured already, I guess. It seems like it carries across characters, unlike ELVUI, as you can see, this is default. So this is where it usually is on my priest and I don't have to configure it. At least that's what it looks like. Okay, so first this thing in the middle is actually details and I don't use details for my damage meter, I use SCADA. So the only reason I have details up is because the casts that I do, that usually shows up on the right side over here, uh, that is because of details. It is part of their streamer plugin. So what you do is you go to the details options, you click on plugins management, and I believe there should be an option here which would allow you to enable the streamer plugin. The reason there is nothing else showing is because on the main character screen where you select all the add-ons, I pretty much disabled all the other plugins for details. This is the only reason that I use it. Um, someone suggested that I do it so people know what I'm casting and I definitely think it's really helpful. Play style wise, I don't use it at all. I don't even look at it. It's just for the fact that I made YouTube videos. So some people might like it because it's useful for them, but um, this definitely does not contribute to my play whatsoever. But yeah, if you just want to hide that main window, you just go to display and then you click on close and then it closes that current editing window. All right, so the first one I'm going to try to import onto this character is my insanity bar. So right now I have windows on my second monitor with no pad on it. And I just have a bunch of my ELV UI strings saved in different notepad windows and I'm copying them over. So first, Never mind, I opened ELV UI, so I'm going to import that one first and see if it works as expected. So from here, you go into Profiles, and then you click on Import Profile. And then I paste it in, and then I click Import Now. So since it already exists, I'm just going to name it this <laughs> because that's the name that I gave this character and click accept. So now you can see that it pretty much updated my chat window. So this used to be a shorter height. I like seeing more stuff in my chat box so I just raised it a little more. I'm also <laughs> more wary about my vision. So I used to feel like, oh, having small text was really cool, but now I like to have my text set to like 16. That way I never have to squint or anything when I'm reading text. And then on the right side, I also have the height raised as well to match the left side. And then it looks like my keybinds copied over. Of course, that would be a little unfortunate if you copied the ELV UI string and it overrided your existing key bindings. So just as a warning, I'm not really sure if that would happen, but if it does, maybe just in case, take a screenshot of your UI and all your key bindings. That way, if they get wiped, then you have a really easy guide to replicate what you had existing. So that is pretty much my ELV UI. Um, a lot of people tend to ask about enemy nameplates, so like this, and how they tend to stack. So if I have them next to each other, they um, kind of float on top instead of over ride each other, if you know what I mean. Like they don't, they don't ever overlap. So that is something I never changed by myself. It was 
set that way by default and I never really felt the desire to change it. I know a lot of people use different enemy unit nameplates, but I don't know. I felt like ELV UI always worked really well for me. So next I'm going to try my insanity bar now. So let's open this up slash WA for weak auras. It's slash ELV UI for ELV UI. And then so here you go to new, you click on import, paste it, and then right down here, you click on import. So here, there it is. I believe you really don't have to change anything for it. Actually, something you want to keep in mind is always pay attention to this load tab right here because sometimes people have specific stuff that they set it to ahead of time. So for example, I personally put priest and shadow is the only time it would show up. And then maybe sometimes I may have had in the past my name right here. So people would import it and it wouldn't show up because it didn't character name is not Alessandra. So just every single time you import into weak auras, just take a look at the load tab and make sure that all of these things are matching whatever you're using it for. That way it's not showing up. Okay, next are the, it's called um, a raid cooldown weak aura, but I use it on the left side over here for my interrupts. So you do the same thing, new import, paste the string and then import. It looks really big because it's just, um, it's filled with a lot more information than I use it for. Like it does, you know, raid cooldowns, defensive cooldowns, other cooldowns, but I only use it for interrupts and I think maybe something else. So it tends to be smaller than this big box. But here, once you have it showing up, this toggles the visibility settings. And then this is just, you know, options to reset the cooldowns if you like. So right now, as you can see, I only have interrupts and battle reses showing, which is incredibly useful for Mythic Plus because people are always asking on Discord, you know, do we have a battle res up or when is the next battle res? And I just have that information right here. Also having interrupt cooldowns is extremely useful. It is pretty much mandatory if you're pushing high keys. It's just nice to keep track of what other people have. Um, since priests have a really long silence, it's 45 seconds and melee have the shorter interrupt cooldowns. I, I tend to hold my interrupt until I see that their cooldowns are all used and I'm pretty much the only one left. That way their cooldown starts counting down right away faster and then mine is just used last because of the long cooldown. Okay, next I'm going to import in my cooldowns that I use for shadow. So I pasted it. Now I'm going to import it. And there it is right there. It's just that simple. And then, you know, double check the load tab, make sure everything is fine. Let me just make sure this is correct. It should be okay. Yeah. So it is for a vampiric touch. I just have, oh, it's more like weak auras is weird and it matches the, uh, it looks like the shred icon for feral druids, but yeah, so I just have the dot counters for whichever target I'm currently targeting. Um, I don't really know why I decided to put that there because I think I always look at nameplates and I don't look at this, but I guess just having them somewhere more than one place is always really useful compared to just only having it on nameplates where nameplates move really often and this is just always stationary. And then the last one is actually just a really, uh, the last one is just something I decided to kind of be fancy about. So it's my mind blast cooldown that goes in that empty spot right here. I just made it so that it would gray out if I had no charges and then it would be colored if I did have charges. I copied the string on the other monitor and I'm going to paste it right here. And then I import it. See, it's right there. And then once I have everything ready, let me just show you how it kind of fits in the group of my other cooldowns. 
Oh my gosh, I have so many now. Okay, see? That's what you guys are used to seeing. And then my insanity bar. <laughs> I have so many duplicates now, I really hope it doesn't carry over to my priest. Um, okay, here's my insanity bar. Okay, so that's where it is. And really, that's just all you need to do. My UI has always been very basic for a while now. Um, in the past, like five years ago, I used to be really excited about making my UI custom, having um, panels and everything, and just moving everything to my specifications, but they would also take hours to create. Whereas I do think ELV UI is really clean and I, I'm completely fine with playing with it. I'm really used to it now, so I don't see myself ever not using it. I hope that me just going over these steps helps people finally to understand what I mean when I say that I have paste bin strings for all aspects of my UI. Um, for Scada, it really is just about resizing it. Um, you can customize the font and stuff and the height of each bar within, but all you have to do is move it over here to the right, and then you want to lock it. That way you don't accidentally click and move it. Let's see, <laughs> I actually had a feeling I didn't lock it, but I did, so I'm all good. One more thing I forgot to mention is that I currently play on 1080p. So if you have a different resolution and you're importing my strings, it might be positioned incorrectly. I've never tried importing across different resolutions. So if the positioning comes out a little different, you might have to just modify those things and just position them how you want it to be. But yeah, I hope that helps you guys replicate this UI. And thank you so much for watching.